From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Thursday, September 23rd, 2021. Let's Encrypt Root Certificate may cause problems for older devices. Let's Encrypt is a nonprofit and one of the largest issuers of HTTPS certificates, the backbone of encrypting traffic. No news there. However, security researcher Scott Helm noticed that the IdentTrust DST Root CA X3 certificate used by Let's Encrypt is set to expire on September 30th, meaning that after that date, devices won't trust certificates that have been issued by the certificate authority. This won't be an issue for most devices, but older devices could face issues. Older game consoles, smartphones, and computers running Windows XP or macOS released prior to 2016 could be impacted. For older Android devices, Let's Encrypt recommends switching the default browser to Firefox to avoid issues. Now we have to worry about FAS. Microsoft's security team announced it discovered a phishing-as-a-service organization dubbed Bulletproof Link that provides phishing services to cybercriminal organizations. Yay! Clients pay Bulletproof Link $800 to register, after which it provides built-in hosting for phishing URLs, email sending services, and collecting credentials from attacks. Bulletproof Link also maintains a separate store for new phishing email templates. Interestingly, Microsoft also saw signs that the organization is keeping copies of compromised credentials for its own purposes. Microsoft described the group as technically sophisticated, evidenced by the group using hacked sites to host phishing pages. Time to patch all the VMware things. VMware disclosed 19 new security vulnerabilities, one of them critical for vSphere and vCenter, which it recommends patching immediately. This bug opens the door for an arbitrary file upload vulnerability in the analytics service that's part of vCenter server. According to an extremely specific warning from VMware, a malicious actor with network access to port 443 on vCenter server may exploit this issue to execute code on vCenter server by uploading a specially crafted file. VMware also provides a workaround mitigation to buy organizations more time while patching gets underway, although the company said that given how the vulnerability could be exploited by ransomware operators, patching should be considered an emergency change. Apple secretly, and ineffectually, patches a zero-day. Security researcher Park Minchin disclosed a security vulnerability in how macOS handles internet location files, which could let an attacker run commands without warning or prompts. macOS Finder allows files with the iNet lock extension to execute arbitrary commands. These files could be embedded in emails and triggered with just a click. It appears Apple attempted to fix the issue without assigning a CVE identification number, blocking execution of embedded commands with a file prefix. However, the fix appears to be case-specific, meaning if you change the capitalization of file to anything but all lowercase, it would still work. As of the time of this recording, Apple hasn't acknowledged the issue or modified its mitigation. And now, a special offer from our sponsor, Canu Solutions. Over the next few weeks, Canu Solutions is offering a series of educational sessions on a variety of topics in security, such as endpoints, networks, privileged access management, Internet of Things, and Government's Risk Management and Compliance, or GRC. Attend these sessions to get some savvy education from the security experts at Canu Solutions. You can also get a $20 Uber Eats gift card just for attending. You can participate in Canu Solutions' Lunch and Learn by registering at canusolutions.com slash events. Lithuania warns about phones from China. Sorry if you're in Lithuania and just upgraded to the latest Xiaomi flagship phone. Lithuania's defense ministry recommended consumers avoid buying and dispose of current Chinese mobile phones. This follows a report from the country's National Cybersecurity Center, which found that Xiaomi phones have the ability to detect and censor specific terms on devices. Though this software is off on devices sold in the EU, the report alleges it can be turned on remotely. The report also alleges that information from Xiaomi phones is being routed through a server in Singapore. Epic isn't getting back in the App Store anytime soon. The legal fight between Epic Games and Apple about the App Store has been nothing if not acrimonious since Epic was suspended from the online store last August. Now Epic CEO Tim Sweeney published a letter Apple sent the company, which says Apple will not consider any further requests for reinstatement until the district court's judgment becomes final and non-appealable. In other words, when Epic has no other legal options available. In a decision that sided with Apple in the dispute, Judge Yvonne Gonzalez-Rogers concluded that Apple was within its rights to suspend Epic accounts if it desires. Scraped LinkedIn user data leaks online. A data leak containing information on roughly 700 million LinkedIn users is being shared on private Telegram channels. 
This comes after someone attempted to sell the dataset on hacking forums back in June. The record obtained the dataset and verified the contents were authentic, including profile names, LinkedIn IDs, location, and email addresses. Having been scraped from public LinkedIn profiles, most of this information was already out there. However, many of the emails included were not ordinarily viewable on the site. LinkedIn reiterated that no data breach occurred. Who watches the watchers? iOS 15, evidently. Apple released iOS 15 this week, and one of the new features in the privacy settings is record app activity. Users can either wait a few days once activated for the OS to generate reports and settings, or export a JSON file with the data at any time. According to developer documentation, this feature will show if an app accesses the photo library, camera, microphone, contacts, the media library, location, screen sharing, and what domains an app reaches out to. Given our coverage of the rise of phishing as a service providers on today's show, there's never been a better time to check out the latest episode of Defense in Depth. This week's show is entitled, Can Technology Solve Phishing? Tech may be helping to reduce the number of successful phishing attempts, but can it ever actually solve it when humans are the last line of defense? It's a critical discussion to hear right now, so check it out over at CISOseries.com or in your podcast app of choice. I'm Rich Straffolino, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.